ahead on Central Georgia tonight, Milledgeville City Council says no more open containers. And then, celebrating Thanksgiving with your favorite professor. And Steve Norris takes us to the Battle of the Bands. Stay with us. The news is next. Georgia College presents Central Georgia Tonight. With this quarter's reporters, Kitty Brent, Carolyn Leahy, Steve Norris, James Downey, Akita Griffith, and Jeff Dawson. Stay tuned, Central Georgia Tonight is coming up next. government has issued a new code that all citizens are expecting to comply with. The new code, which has been in effect for three weeks now, outlaws consumption and possession of alcoholic beverages in public areas of the city. According to the new ordinance, no person shall in the city drink alcoholic beverages or possess alcoholic beverages in any open container while upon or with any parked vehicle upon any public street alley, parking lot, park or city owned and operated recreation center, public building, or any parking area adjacent to any place of business conducted and licensed under this chapter. To go, Milledgeville had an existing law similar to the new ordinance under different restrictions. Therefore, in many cases, the law was unable to uphold in court. The new law excludes private property from the open container ordinance. Well, under the old law, uh, the language was such, and I don't think it was intentional, but it was such that you could be arrested in your backyard drinking an alcoholic beverage, grilling your own hamburgers. Well, this is just constitutionally wrong. So. Students who frequent downtown bars are advised to obey the new code. Anyone caught violating the code will be fined. Ken Vance also says the possible fines could range up to $300. Currently, Georgia College resident hall students who are 21 years of age or older can, according to the resident's life, consume alcoholic beverages in their room with the door closed. The new code, however, makes leaving the halls and heading into the city while openly carrying a container of alcohol officially illegal. Georgia College students turned out in large numbers Wednesday night to have dinner with a designated faculty member. The progressive dinner began in Chapel Hall at 5.30 where students and faculty members ate hors d'oeuvres and mingled with one another. The progressive dinner is a yearly event usually scheduled during the fall quarter. Georgia College administrators say the dinner allows students and faculty members to establish a better relationship together. The idea is for staff and faculty to get to know students in a more relaxed home atmosphere, kind of get ready for the holiday season here, even though it's uh, coming up in about a month's time. It's kind of the beginning of not only the Christmas season, but Thanksgiving season. After dinner was over, everyone returned to the Cappy Alumni Center for dessert and entertainment. The Psychology Honor Fraternity, Psy Chi, is, is collecting canned goods to help needy, the needy during the holiday season. If you're interested in helping out, you can drop, drop off the canned goods in Parks Hall near the Registrar's Office or in the Psychology Department. Many students are tired of living in the residence halls, but they don't know how to find the right apartment. Akita Griffin has the helpful hints on the art of apartment hunting. Apartment hunting is never an easy task, but some students receive some helpful hints at a workshop called The Art of Apartment Hunting. Director of Commuter Services, Leanne Billingsley, says the workshop offered all kinds of helpful hints about finding the right apartment. We've got a little bit of everything. First of all, you know, what exactly are you looking for when you're looking for an apartment? Um, then when, when you are ready, where do you go? How do you find out where an apartment is, where a mobile home is, where do you start to look? And then once you actually found a place, what are some good things to look at in that apartment? Here are just a few things to consider when looking for an apartment. Do you want a roommate? What is the deposit? How close is the apartment to campus? What utilities are included in the rent? 
Billingsley says students should also be concerned about safety when looking for an apartment. She advises students to make sure there is sufficient lighting. I had a student say to me the other day how, oh, she'd be safe once she was in. I was like, yeah, but you've got at some point to get from your car inside your house. So think about that. Do you, are you going to feel safe about that? Look for lighting. One student said the workshop was very beneficial. I got out a lot of things that I had never even thought about. So I think that it was very beneficial for anyone who would be looking for a place to live. Finding the right apartment is not always an easy task. So if you're looking for an apartment, make sure you weigh all your options. By just following a few simple questions, you too can master the art of apartment hunting. An art of a different kind is happening on a, pers a personal computer. Music professor Clyde Tipton is training students using computers and visuals. Central Georgia Science, Don Pollard has the story. Students interested in music will soon be able to compose it on the computer thanks to assistant professor of music Clyde Tipton. Tipton is working with the program enabling student composers to play music on a keyboard and have it transposed onto a computer screen. The notes can then be manipulated to sound however the composer wants them to. The key, instrument, and notes can all be changed right on the screen. Tipton to explain the advantages the program will bring to the music department. In several ways. One is, uh, if we need a part for a band arrangement, we can come over here and type it on, and it will print it out in a very beautiful way. Uh, composition, it'll help us to get a very beautiful copy of our composition, either that I write, I'm a composer, or that some of the students might write pieces that they would like to be printed out, look just like printed music from the publisher. So it has those advantages. Anyone interested in the program can contact Professor Tipton in the music department. This has been Don Pollard for Central Georgia Tonight. Next on Central Georgia Tonight, the Georgia College Colonials get pumped up for a new season. And here's Kenny Brent with the sports. Carolyn, on court, the Colonials are sweating it out, trying to get ready for a tough season. Central Georgia Tonight's Travis Porterfield has the story. The students at Georgia College are still enjoying this unseasonably warm weather. The quarter is coming to a close, and yes, exams are once again on their way. And although the weather makes it seem like early fall, it is time once again for Georgia College basketball. The Georgia College Colonials have been getting ready for their new season under their new coach, Terry Sellers. The team is young and is going to look for leadership out of senior Chad Payne, but the team is going to need a group effort to gain success on the court. Coach Terry Sellers tells us a little about his team. How do you feel about the team going into the first game of the season? Well, you know, I think that, uh, you know, we're certainly, you know, got to have a long way to go, but I've been pleased that the players have been working very hard, and I think we're making progress, and, you know, we're going to have to be a top team. It's going to have to just you know, improve and, you know, make a lot of progress as the season progresses and hopefully be ready by conference time. But I've been pleased with the work habits and uh, I've been pleased with the intensity and the effort that the players have been putting into the, the exhibition game that we had last Monday night. So I'm looking forward to getting the season started. Coach Sellers has this to add. Get out. Well, right now, the thing that I've always stressed is the team concept and uh, we have several players that are all chipping in, contributing, playing well, and I think that's the kind of team we're going to have to be. I don't think we'll have uh, one or two players that, are gonna, that we have to rely on to get the job done for us, and uh, I think we do have some players who are capable of having big nights for us, but overall I think we're going to have to be a type of team where uh, everybody pitches in, everybody does, uh, you know, does uh, a good job in a lot of different areas. The Colonials will begin their play November 22nd against North Georgia College, but the real test will come in January when they start their conference play. This is Travis Porterfield for Central Georgia Tonight. Intramural playoffs are over, and here are the final scores. The Old Crows won 21-6 over the Cobra Warriors, and Bojos were the winners in the women's division. The Colonials have a new mascot this year. The mascot will wear a new latex costume with a matching head. The identity of the person inside the suit will remain a secret so that the mascot will have a personality of his own. The school recently held a Name the Mascot contest, but the results have not been announced yet. 
At last count, Skippy was the favorite. Any ideas, Carolyn, on what we should name the mascot? What about Sparky? Sounds good to me. <laughs> Thanks, Kitty. Keep watching. We've just we've got young musical talent when we come back. A few Middle Georgia bands who have liked to eventually make their living off music battled it out last week. Central Georgia tonight, Steve Norris was on hand for the fun. The Georgia College Student Activity Corps presented the annual Battle of the Bands earlier this month. This year's bands included Third Stage, Dead Black Cats, DeSoto's Favorite Indians, Sage, Dream Thieves, Newfound Days, and Tempest. I asked a few of the people involved why the contest is held. The purpose of a battle of the bands like this, I guess, would be to showcase local talent. I'm real big on it myself with the radio station because I think that local talent is, is, just, is where it's coming from. You know, that, that's the future of music. Something like this allows bands, like local bands, to be publicized, and it also gives a chance for people to come out and see good talent. And also, there's also a cash prize of $200 and um, a chance to open up for our Spring Music Fest in April because there's really, really a lot of talent here at Georgia, and uh, this is one way of getting them out, getting, uh, getting them to uh, expose themselves. Uh, we're in it for the chance to open up for the bands uh, for homecoming in the spring. So that's, uh, we had an off night, so here we are. After the show, I asked some of the crowd who they thought would win. Well, you know, I'd have to go with Newfound Days, but that one with the girl in it, she was pretty cute. I think the group Sage is going to win. They had a lot of variety, and I liked them a lot. I think the Dead Flag Cats are, are going to win. If not for the sheer talent, he spit on the carpet. <laughs> that was awesome. You got it. found days. Woo! And when it was all over, Allison Hayes announced the winner. This year's 1993 Battle of the Bands winner is Newfound Days. Right. Overall, everyone seemed to have a really good time. Steve Norris, Central Georgia Tonight. That's all the news for tonight. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you after the Thanksgiving holidays. Let's go.